Foundations. When Abraham gave him tithes, Melchizedek gave him bread and wine. And what do we know that bread and wine represents? Maybe to represent his body and blood in a covenant meal with Abraham. Mm. Foundations, understanding the Jewish foundations of our Christian faith. With Robbo Robinson and Mandy Warby. We've been learning about the names of God, names that he uses to reveal different facets of his nature, character, and attributes. And in this program, we're going to be looking at the name Yahweh Shalom. Shalom. It's one of those words that is, um, I don't know that there's anybody that doesn't know the word Shalom. Mm. And in general conversation, particularly with Hebrew-speaking people, the word Shalom means hello. It also means goodbye. Kind of like um, aloha in Hawaii means hello and goodbye. But unlike Hawaiian, the word shalom actually has, like most Hebrew words, it's far richer, far deeper um, than what would normally be the typical understanding, which is peace. Most people think it Mm. just means peace. The name Yahweh Shalom or Yahovah Shalom, it's only found in one place in the Bible, and that's in the book of Judges, and it was during the days of Gideon. Remember when God revealed himself uh, to Gideon, they were under the, um, was it the Midianites that were constantly attacking the Jews at that particular time? And then the angel of the Lord appears to Gideon. And remember, the history of the Jewish people was that they had seen the might and the power of God delivering them from the Egyptians and out of slavery and what a spectacular show God put on. So they saw that, but they also remembered what it was like for them in the wilderness where they knew you couldn't look upon God and actually come out of it alive. And so they would beg Moses, you be the intermediary. You go and talk Mm. to him on our behalf and then you just come and tell us what he said. They didn't want to come face to face with God because it was terrifying. So Gideon has this encounter with the angel of the Lord and he goes, oh, no. Mm, (laughs) He actually says in Judges 6, verses 22 and 24, when Gideon saw that he was the angel of the Lord, he said, alas, I I bet it was more than alas, (laughs) oh, Lord God, for now I've seen the angel of the Lord face to face. Now, the Lord then said, peace to you, don't fear you shall not die. Gideon thought he was going to mm. die. You can't face God and not die. Then Gideon built an altar to the Lord and he named it the Lord is peace. And to this day, it's still in Ophrah of the Abizarites. Now, the meaning of the word shal- it, shalom, it's Hebrew, and it does mean peace, but it's so much more. It actually means uh, to be complete, um, soundness, welfare, It does mean peace, but this completeness in number, in being safe, being sound in your body, um, for your health, prosperity, not just in finances, but prospering in, you know, as Hassam says, that your soul may prosper, Mm. that you would prosper as your soul prospers. So it's talking about a whole multi-dimensional, you know, view of prosperity. Having that uh, tranquil peace within your own heart, being content, um, it's that contentment in friendships, in human relationships, also with God, especially in a covenant relationship. And it also means peace from war. So it, mm. it, it's very, <laughs> it's a very big word. It's really. far reaching, isn't it? Covering it's, all, all the aspects. So here's the thing. When somebody says shalom to you as a greeting, that's a pretty nice mm, greeting. That's really. right. Yeah. And it's a nice greeting to say goodbye as well. So they're wishing all of that upon you yeah, as you go. As it's you lovely. leave, yeah. But what about uh, Melchizedek or Melchizedek? He was the king of Salem. Mm -hmm. Now, Salem is what the city of Jerusalem was originally called. And the word Salem or Salem uh, is also the same as the word Shalom. And they both mean peace. And now later it was the uh, the Jebusites actually invaded and they took over the city that was called Salem. They named it Jebus. And then after them, King David conquered it and he called it Jerusalem. Although in Hebrew there's no J. Um, <laughs> it's Yahushalayim. <That's> <laughs> but it, it, that actually means the city of peace. So Melchid, uh, Melchizedek, he was called the prince, or the, sorry, the priest of the Most High God. And you remember the story of when Abraham, he went to Salem after rescuing Lot and he had an encounter with Melchizedek. He actually gave tithes to Melchizedek. And 
Merck had said it gave him two things. I'll come to that in just a sec. It's believed by many scholars that the high priest Melchizedek, who had no father, no mother, but was kind of this eternal being, that he was a pre-incarnate version of Jesus, of Christ, the Messiah. That is what a lot of people believe. And when Abraham went to Salem, which was a city of peace, Mm. to meet Melchizedek, the high priest, gave him tithes, Melchizedek gave him bread and wine. Mm. And what do we know that bread and wine represents? The body and the blood of Christ. Yeah. So here is a pre-incarnate Messiah, Jesus, giving bread and wine, maybe to represent his body and blood in a covenant meal with Abraham. Mm. And now the name Jerusalem is actually made up of two Hebrew words, Yara and Shalom. Yara is a verb and it means to give out energy or to teach or to dispense something. If you put that together with Shalom, you see that Jerusalem, Yerushalayim, is the city of peace or the abode of peace where peace is taught and given and dispensed from that place. This is what God has to say about the city of Jerusalem. In 2 Chronicles 6 verses 5 to 6, it says this, Since the day I brought my people out of Egypt, I haven't chosen a city in any tribe of Israel to have a temple built so that my name might be there, nor have I chosen anyone to be ruler over my people Israel. But now I have chosen Jerusalem for my name to be there, and I have chosen David to rule my people Israel. So here's the thing. God chose the city of peace to be the place where his name would dwell, where his temple would reside, and where his king would rule from. Because where God is, there is peace. He wanted this this association between peace and himself, because that is the character of God. So he places his name and he commanded his temple to be there along with the head of his government, because everything about God was to be a place where peace, where he gives peace to everybody Mm. who comes to him. Shalom is synonymous with God, Um, and God is incomparable to anything that the world can offer. As as a for example, remember Jesus said that he would give peace Mm. to his people, but it would be peace that the world wouldn't understand. It can't give it, can't take it away, doesn't understand it. Yeah, I wanted to um, mention Psalm forty six. No time to read Psalm forty six. Now the word shalom is not in Psalm forty six. But it's describing a world that is, it's chaotic, it's in meltdown, it's violent, the nations are completely in uproar, kingdoms are falling, war is going on all over the place, armies are fighting, weapons are being shattered. And in the midst of it, in all of this chaos, God says, because you're surrounded with all of this fear and anxiety and uncertainty, God says this, Psalm 46 and verse 10, he says, Be still and know that I am God. And I will be exalted among the nations and will be exalted in the earth. Where God is, when he resides in you, it actually doesn't matter what's going on around Mm. you because the peace of God resides inside of you. The whole world can be exploding or imploding around you. And you will still have this peace that surpasses all understanding inside of you because that's who God is. Yeah, well, he's the prince of peace, isn't he? He is. And I think... This name, um, this is who he is, Yahweh Shalom. When you have this peace of God within you, or or let me put it this way, the peace that comes from God does not mean that you live with the absence of turmoil or chaos or struggle. What it actually means is that God's peace, which is the essence of himself, actually allows you to live peacefully in the middle of the chaos and the yeah. turmoil and the uncertainty and the struggle. Well, I guess Jesus, when he talked to his disciples, he said they would have trouble. But in John fourteen twenty seven, Jesus says, peace I leave with yeah. you. So he promises his peace in the midst of the trouble. But then he says, don't let your hearts be troubled or afraid. Because that's who he is. That's mm. his nature. Hey? It certainly is a great uh, thing to be aware of, that he is our Prince of Peace, Yahweh Shalom. And we're going to continue to look at another name of God in our next program, and that is Yahweh Ra'ah. 
This has been Foundations, a look at the Jewish foundations of our Christian faith. For study notes, resources and more, see vision.org.au slash foundations.